Logan here and um, it's relatively quiet day. Uh, it is in the middle of winter so uh, it's a little slower here at the restaurant. We're actually technically in the middle of prep for lunch. Uh, we serve lunch from 11.30 to 1. Um, but we wanted to do a Facebook Live video. It's been a little while since we've done one here in the restaurant and um, we've been really, lately we've been working with a very exciting uh, great uh, product I would, I guess you would call it. But uh, a couple months ago we got in some blue papa and red papa corn from one of our growers and we're, the restaurant was fortunate enough to, uh, to be able to get some to use in the restaurant, play around with, see what we thought. Um, kind of maybe create some recipes and um, you know show show everybody how to use such such a variety. So this is this is blue papa and um, let's see we get a little closer here. But um, you can really tell it, it's blue, but it has shades of purple, red. It's it's really just absolutely beautiful. This one is more more of a pure red, different shades of red. Um, and then these are the two once they've been they they were grinded. Uh, Matt Powers brought in his, his grinder to grind up this corn um, so we could use it in a variety of ways. Um, and of course, when you have a variety like this, you know it's growing well, it's a cool heirloom variety, you don't want to try to do too much to it. Um, so I wanted to come up with a recipe that would really honor the variety of corn. And this corn is probably unlike anything you've ever had before, it's very cake like. Um, and so I thought about cornbread immediately. I've always been interested in doing it in a cast iron skillet. So um, I took one of the cornbread recipes that I've used before, slightly modified it for this type of variety of corn. We're going to show you how to mix a batch. We'll also post the recipe because I have it right here for everybody to be able to try at home. Um, but it's really simple, which is cool. So basically, um, for this recipe, uh, we, we've tried it two different ways. We've tried it with just blue just red and today we tried a combination because we the colors of course is what what makes this cornbread cool um, besides just the the texture and, and the taste of it um, the flavor so we wanted to try mixing the two together to see if we get kind of marble coloring so for this for this for today we're going to combine them so in a normal recipe you go two cups of, of corn um, and this is this is grind pretty fine we, we we wanted to leave it a little coarse just so you could get some of that real deep color, different parts in the cornbread, but it, it's pretty finely ground. So we're going to do a cup of each. And then the cool thing about this recipe, and I've modified it almost every time, um, is that you can use different types of flours, different types of oils, so on and so forth. So this is just your standard all purpose flour, uh, a cup of that. So basically you have three cups total there. They get in a mix in. Um, pretty simple recipe. This is uh, two teaspoons of baking uh, powder. You got a half a teaspoon of salt. And then what you want to do is uh, mix your dry ingredients together first. And you can you can kind of start to see <laughs> the end result already. Um, the colors start. Well, you'll see in a minute. They're magnificent. Um, and I should mention too that if you're going to cast iron skillet root, you don't have to for this recipe. Um, you can you can just make it in a baking pan. You could even make it in a deep pie plate if you want to. Right now, though, um, it's it's important if you want to do it in the cast iron skillet to preheat it. So right now, have the oven set at uh, 350, which is where you're going to be baking it in the skillet. Uh, coat it in a little bit of oil. And um, then I, <laughs> customers walking in early. Um, so coat it in a little oil and uh, put it in the oven. So basically you want to heat it up before using it. So it's been lightly covered in a little bit of olive oil. Today I'm using olive oil. You could use coconut oil. I mean, you could really use whatever. Coconut oil is my favorite because it adds a little hint of sweetness to it. Olive oil, you're going to get that olive oil taste. Um, so anyway, so you, you want to pull it out at this point, uh, so it's hot, but about 10-15 minutes in the oven to get it heated is will do the trick. So anyways, we got your dry ingredients all mixed up. For the, for the wet ingredients, two, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, and then you have two cups of coconut milk. So what's nice is if, if you 
remember, which I didn't this time around, put the apple cider vinegar in the coconut milk um, so it kind of congeals together just for a couple minutes is fine. If you forget, it's not a big problem. Um, and then you have a third of a cup of olive oil. And then the cool thing again about this recipe is honoring the natural flavor of it. So right here we only have uh, two tablespoons of maple syrup. You could use agave if you wanted to. You could even use a simple syrup if you wanted to. Um, but regardless, it's a very little amount of sweetener to really honor that flavor. So you could go ahead and mix in those wet ingredients. And then you're just gonna, just gonna wanna mix it until it's, so you don't see any more flour or corn sticking out there. Um, and as the ingredients get wet, as the corn gets wet, you'll really start to see those, those colors pop. Um, so there you got your mix. Oven's at 350. And then, um, so you're just gonna wanna go ahead and pour the cornbread. If you're doing a cast iron skillet, just right, on to the, right into the cast iron skillet. Like I said, deep pie, pie pan could work or just like a square eight by eight baking dish would work. Um, I've done this in Pyrex. Um, really, you can do it in all sorts of ways. So there you go, it's, it's in the cast iron skillet. Um, you can cook it in two different temperatures, two different ways. So if you like a kind of a thicker crust on your, on your cornbread, so a little more done on the, like a little crispy, you could cook it at about four, 415. For the same amount of time, texture on the middle is gonna be about the same, but you're gonna get that kind of crispy brown on the, on the outside. If you want more just overall moist, perfectly done, go at 350. Um, and with, any, with anything, there's always you know, variations. Every oven cooks differently. Elevation can play a role when you're baking. Um, but I would go ahead and start a timer for 30 minutes on that first go around, and then you'll see. Basically what you're looking for is that middle. You wanna make sure that middle, wait, if you just press lightly, it's gonna hold up, it's not, you know, it's not too moist in the middle, then pull it out. Um, a lot of times people will wait till you, you know, it's, it's like really well done, um, but it will finish baking, it will finish setting once it's out of the oven, and that's a key. So right here we got one that I made earlier. So this is a final product. This was a double batch and a bigger cast iron skillet. Um, and like, when it, like I said, when I took it out, it was a little uh, pressed down and it was a little softer, but it firmed up. Um, one of the keys, especially with the cast iron skillet method, is to really take it out of the oven and let it cool before, before messing with it. You try and cut this too early, it will feel, fall apart and, you, and you'll probably feel like you failed, like the first time I tried it. <laughs> and then I just, had to have a little patience. I wanted to try it. Um, you have a little patience. Let it sit maybe 30, 40 minutes and, uh, and you'll be good. So, so here it is, the final product. As you can see, the color on the outside is beautiful. The color on the inside, of course, is, is really where you want to really see it. So what we're going to do... Cutting on the edge first, grab these edge pieces so they this is good to cut out early. So there you go, then you can see kind of the detail. You got blue, purple, pink, red, um, and you can just see the different flakes and kind of just how it melted in there. It's, uh, it's kind of like if you have like those sprinkles uh, uh, in a cake or something, <laughs> except this is way healthier. So, um, so yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I rec highly recommend um, just eating it like this, especially when it's a, still a little warm delicious flavor. You can't go wrong. Um, in the restaurant, we had served this last week as an entree um, and we had just used it as a side. Today we wanted, and we didn't do a Facebook live video last week, so we wanted to make it again. Since I was making a bunch of it, decided to run it today as a special for dessert. So today we're going to treat it more as like a shortcake. So we have strawberries from uh, this past uh, growing season that we froze and so we got like a a strawberry reduction going here um, that will be, be be used with it and let's see I could probably just make up a quick plate um, 
So we're gonna run a special today. That's one of the fun things about coming into the Baker Creek restaurant is, uh, is you never know exactly. Uh, we change things. Sometimes we'll have daily specials. We do have regular menu items. We're really working on, on getting great consistency here at the restaurant for everybody who comes through our doors. But uh, we also, because we have time on our hands some days, and because we have all these fun things to play with, sometimes we get to do daily specials that uh, we get to surprise guests with. So, let's see, I haven't played it this yet. So you're gonna kind of see me try to figure this one out here. Um, but, like I said, it's, it, it, again, because of like the cake-like uh, texture that you get from this variety of corn, I just felt like it was appropriate to treat it more like a, more like a cake, leave the sweetness to other components in the dish. So we have a, uh, we have a strawberry, the beginnings of a strawberry reduction. It's still setting up, but it'll work for this. So we're gonna probably go down on the plate. And this is very, this is, there's no sweetener added to this. This is just a straight strawberry. So it's a little tart. Um, again, building different components. Probably name goes something like this. This is, this is the fun part of my job, trying to figure this part out, but. And also just trying to show off the different components. So you see that nice brown edge from the cast iron maybe go like that and then we'll take a little bit of this the actual strawberries from from the field these were grown on site here at Baker Creek maybe go in here a little bit let it set into that cornbread a little bit so the strawberries have kind of deconstructed a bit and then I am come right and just grab one real quick thing So one of the fun new developments here at Baker Creek is that we just recently got an ice cream machine. So we're now able to make our own coconut based, plant based ice cream. Um, so this morning I went ahead and made a batch of uh, vanilla coconut ice cream. It just got done just a short time ago. So we're probably gonna go something like this. Just to finish it off, this, this ice cream is, is much more on the sweet side compared to everything else that's on the dish. So, just saying, I'll probably put a little scoop here at the end. Oops, I got two pieces on there. Two pieces, there we go. Something like that. And it's probably gonna slide off on me because of how shot the strawberries are. So, let that melt in. So. Kind of like a, <laughs> a red papa, blue papa, uh, shortcake adaptation. So that's, that's a rough example of uh, a daily special here at uh, Baker Creek Restaurant today. Uh, we love having fun here with all the different varieties. Very uh, honored to, to work with all these cool ingredients and products that either we're growing here, that we source from around the world, and that our growers are uh, are growing for us and for everybody who's a customer at Baker Creek. So if you get a chance to come into Baker Creek Restaurant and enjoy uh, uh, an heirloom inspired lunch, definitely join us here. It's, it's always a lot of fun. We have this beautiful open kitchen. Um, you can see what's going on. Also, if you get a chance, we do have a new Baker Creek Restaurant Instagram. So if, if you're somewhere else in the world and can't get to us just yet, you can follow us. We're, we're constantly posting new photos and, and videos of what we're doing, along with Facebook Live, which we're determined to get better at as we move forward. Um, but that's Blue Papa and Red Papa. It's a great variety. Certainly probably not gonna be something you've ever had before. Um, the color is outstanding and, uh, and a simple recipe. It's easy to work with. It's not something that takes a lot of finesse. So uh, definitely encourage uh, you to work with something like that. But um, I think that I think that's about it. We're gonna we're gonna get back to prepping here at, at the restaurant, getting ready for customers. But uh, thanks for joining in live. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll get to them 
Friday after service today, and, um, and I will be posting that recipe as well. So thanks for joining us here.